what are the best settings for this monitor? And by best settings, what I really mean are the test settings I use in my review. So they are applicable to my unit, they suit my preferences, and also the colorimetric targets which I go for in my reviews. Individual units and preferences do vary. So I do like to have a variable refresh rate on, and in the OSD, if you see things with this little button like that, if it's red and it's to the right, that means it's on. Whereas if it's to the left and it's gray rather than highlighted in red, that means the setting is disabled. So variable refresh rate allows you to use adaptive sync. It's basically your adaptive sync toggle. So it allows you to use FreeSync Premium Pro, G-Sync compatible. You can also use G-Sync compatible via HDMI 2.1 VRR and use HDMI 2.1 VRR. I'm not entirely sure if you actually need variable refresh rate enabled in the OSD. I haven't specifically tested that out and I don't have HDMI hooked up at the moment. So I'm not sure if you need variable refresh rate active if you want to use HDMI 2.1 VRR. But even if you're not actually using VRR, you can still have variable refresh rate active in the OSD. The other thing you'd have to be paying attention to are, of course, the presets, game visual. Racing mode is the default, and that's just fine. I was happy to just use that. The other settings, they make various different changes. So scenery mode is highly oversaturated. You can use these presets and then make other adjustments, but some of the adjustments it makes can't be counteracted in the OSD. So as I said, it looks very oversaturated, but the six axis saturation control is actually all at 50. You can reduce this a bit to sort of offset it, but really there's no point. If you're going to be doing that, you might as well use a different preset. And there's cinema mode, which is more of the same, really. Actually very oversaturated. It appears to have a bit of a cool tint. Well, that could just be the amount of blue on my desktop wallpaper, which is massively oversaturated in this particular setting. RTS RPG, that has a warmer look to it, but seems to be very oversaturated. So yes, cinema does look very cool compared to RTS RPG, and I don't mean cool in a good way, I mean cool as in high white point. FPS mode really flooded, also very saturated, but this is designed to give you a competitive edge, so you might find that useful if you like how it looks, and you can make further adjustments, so using FPS mode you can adjust the saturation to your taste as well, to some extent. And the shadow boost, which is set to level 3 with this setting by default, but you can adjust that if you wish. There's SRG calibration mode. I wouldn't recommend using this, although it is called SRGB calibration mode. That's actually quite locked down. There's another SRGB setting which is actually a little bit more accurate, or it was on my unit. And you can use that with any of your other presets, so I'd recommend racing mode. and. That allows you to adjust things like the brightness and the colour channels, as well as the gamma, so you get good flexibility. You actually get the same flexibility as you do with the other settings. So if you go to colour, display colour space, you can change this to sRGB if you want. And that is an effective sRGB emulation setting, so that gives more as the developers intend look, more muted saturation levels. And when I say as the developers intend, it's because most content is designed with the sRGB colour space in mind when you're using the monitor under SDR. Under HDR, none of this applies and you can't actually change the setting anyway, so don't worry about that. So a wide gamut if you want the highest level of vibrancy and saturation. sRGB if you want that more toned down as the developers intend look. DCI-P3, that's somewhere between those two. With DCI-P3, just be aware that you will need to set the colour well, the colour temperature to one of the predefined settings. If you have it set to user, then it actually just goes to an sRGB emulation mode, even though it says DCI-P3. But if you select something else, for example, 6500K, then it actually is DCI-P3 emulating. But because of how I like to test monitors, I like to stick to wide gamut to show the full capabilities and what things will look like with the full gamut. And then I export sRGB separately, but of course, according to your own preferences, you may prefer using one or the other most of the time. And be aware that this is applied universally, so it doesn't apply just to specific presets. So if you wanted sRGB for some games, for example, and wide gamut for others, then you would have to use that load thing, the save and load feature for the shortcut keys, which I showed you earlier, at least in the full OSD video I showed you earlier. So just a quick reminder, my favourite customized settings. You can have setting one and setting two. You can have sRGB and wide gamut, for example. And you can then assign shortcut keys to quickly load setting one and setting two. So that would be how you'd switch between the two different gamut settings easily. So I've got variable refresh rate on. I've got it set to the default wide gamut mode. Most of the other settings I did leave at default and even brightness I actually left at default because it happened to get around 160 nits on my unit, which is what I go for in my reviews when I'm calibrating, and I go for that for consistency, it's just what I've done for a long time, it suits most of the lighting conditions in which I use monitors. But of course you want to be setting this according to your own preferences. And a very important setting associated with this is uniform brightness. 
If you have this disabled, then the monitor will vary its brightness according to the content being displayed and it will generally dim when there's brighter content or more bright content on the screen and it will get brighter when there's less bright content on the screen. So there's largely dark content on the screen. If you have uniform brightness enabled, then it's much more consistent, but it will cap your brightness. As a measure in the review, it's around 260 nits with uniform brightness on. So that's actually perfectly fine for most people. But if you're someone who does like really bright monitors under SDR, then you might want to turn uniform brightness off, but you might find the lack of consistency annoying. The only other thing I changed was a very slight change to the color channels. So it's set to user by default in racing mode and everything is set to 100, red, green, and blue. I just nudged down blue one notch to 99. Again, that worked on my unit. It's not gonna be the same on all units. So by all means, try this. So really that's what I did. I just enabled uniform brightness and I slightly changed the blue color channel. I realized I missed off a few presets. So I'll just quickly talk about them. I don't consider them best settings by any means, but it's worth going through them anyway, just for completeness. So the other one's MOBA mode, which gives a very funky look. It just highlights certain shades. You can kind of see oranges and some green shades. I don't play MOBAs myself. I don't know if this is advantageous, this kind of look. So just as a reminder, this is what it looks like normally. In MOBA mode, it looks like that. And then there's user mode, and this is really quite similar to racing mode by default, but there are a few extra options which you can configure. I believe it's six axis saturation, which is available here, but not in racing mode. I'll just quickly check for you. So vivid pixel isn't available in racing mode, but it is in user and six axis saturation. I've now switched over to HDR, so I can talk about the HDR settings. Quite a lot of the menu is grayed out under HDR. The uniform brightness setting looks like it isn't grayed out or it's available, but it doesn't actually do anything under HDR, but HDR setting, that's the main one. By default, it's set to console HDR. The setting you want to use could well depend on your device. If you're using a games console, of course, try console HDR. On the PC though, on the games I tested, so I'm using Tomb Raider at the moment, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, things don't look right at all using the console HDR setting. Annoyingly, it's not being picked up properly on the camera. To the eye, the light up there, it has this very, very odd saturated yellow and orange look to it. Don't know why it doesn't appear at all like that on the video. And the glint of light there on the water surface, that appears with a very saturated, far too saturated red outer rim and then an orange rim just inside of that. Again, not sure why it's not captured at all properly on the video. It's just something that the camera is not sensitive to or isn't picking up. And it didn't matter how I calibrated the HDR setting in the game either. So my preference, at least on my unit and with the PC games I was playing. This also worked well for HDR video content incidentally that I looked at on the PC. Gaming HDR. In terms of the brightness capability, it's actually the same regardless of which setting you set here except for display HDR 400 true black. So what that will do is that will limit the brightness and it will stop the automatic brightness limiter kicking in so heavily. So it will give you a more consistent experience, but it will cap your brightness. If you prefer that, then by all means use that setting. But I would recommend you just try all of the settings and see which one you prefer. So I prefer gaming HDR. Cinema HDR is not too different to this. It just tends to be a little bit dimmer overall. Some of the bright shades seem to be toned down a bit, but the brighter shades are still very bright, and as I said, the peak luminance doesn't change. So I don't know why the console HDR mode looks so funky and why it's not captured at all in the video, but never mind. The other setting is brightness adjustable. As it says there, HDR PQ curve will be affected when the brightness adjustment is on under HDR mode. And this is correct. So I've selected brightness adjustable and you can use this with any of the other HDR settings. So I'm using it with gaming HDR now, but it works in much the same way regardless. Brightness, if you reduce that, it kind of dulls the image. If you reduce it a lot, it's quite an obvious effect that it affects shades which shouldn't be affected. So it drags down a lot of the medium shades so they're too dull. It doesn't just cap the brightness. If you want to cap the brightness, again, I'd recommend the HDR 400 True Black setting. But if you need to adjust this a little bit because you're finding it uncomfortable, then of course, viewing comfort always takes priority. So do feel free to adjust this. So yep, that's all I did under HDR. I just changed over to the gaming HDR setting. It's a final thing to note that you can use variable refresh rate under HDR. That isn't a problem on this monitor.